Angel wants to talk about something very important. What a dope, what a fool, what an ignoramus must a man be to go into an environment that does not support him, to try to cut the corners, to, tr excuse me, to try to meet women physically desirable because we think with the little head, not the big one. Freud always said, I want to start the discussion off this way. Dr. Freud always said, where it is, where the libido drive is, where the sexual drive is, ego must always be there. Ego, intellect, judgment, right judgment, good judgment, experience judgment, street smart, field tested judgment must be there to rule. It cannot be otherwise. That judgment, that ego that's familiar with the legal aspects, the social mores, the, the uh, protocols, the social protocols, that must be in control of the judgment process. Must be able to learn to deal with what's out there, what's directly in front of us. I didn't set the rules. If I had set the rules, I would set them up a lot differently. But I have no power, I have no credibility. I'm just a short, small, old man. That's all. All I'm doing is spouting off at Hyde Park. Ranting and raving. But I'm speaking my truth as I see it. And that's enough. That's all the justification I need. Why would you go into an environment that doesn't support you? The biggest mistake in the world. I made that mistake. You try to cut corners. You try to go into an environment where you can meet women, desirable, physically desirable women. When I say physically desirable women, I mean women that have the same attitude towards sexuality, the same openness that I have. And I'm talking very specifically about a porno mentality, porno attitude. And what I mean by that is free spirit. What I mean by that is the promise, the words, sexual revolution, which apply to some, but certainly not to all. There was a lot of inclusiveness and exclusiveness in what we, and when I say we, I'm talking for myself, thought it would be. We thought it would include all of us. But the same old bullshit continues. It's called the bullshit of access. It's called the bullshit of how do you approach hello. Not what do you say after you say hello. That's a piece of cake. How do you get accepted? How do you get access? How do you get legitimate access to saying hello? Then we we'll worry about what Dr. Eric Byrne talks about. How, what do you say after you say hello? How do you say hello in the first place? This means your appearance, your personality, body odor, halitosis, the clothes you're wearing, your physical conditioning, and most of all, your stamina. Stamina, man. Your verbal judo skills, your service, your ability to understand the situation, understand yourself, comprehend yourself in the situation here and now your ability to deal with what is exactly in front of you. Not what you wish would be there, not what you hope would be there, not what you sh what should be there if everything was fair, if it was just and everybody had a fair shot and all that other bullshit. No, you have to embrace and want, or I should say I have to, I'm speaking for myself, embrace and want and love what's right there in front of me in the arena and encounter and confrontation as it's happening in the now and embrace the bad begin with embracing the bad the good is a gift 
What I'm saying specifically is the bad is more primordial, is more original. The good is predicated on the bad paradoxically. We have to go through 500 yards of pure shit to get to the end of that tunnel. Or if you're a short, small man and it's open season, it's a pandemic problem on the short, small man. To be short is to be small. To be small is to not be able to make an impression, to not be credible, to not be strong and all that other bullshit that goes along with that. And to be in, par- in pillory and all the other bullshit that goes along with that. To be a pariah, a social pariah. That means it's ten times as hard for the short, small man to make an impression, to survive, to get access to even say hello successfully. Hello means the introduction. Hello means able to break through the clicks and to break through the uh, obstacles, the many obstacles that face the short, small man. That's why there are strategies for the short, small man to survive in a world like this. And don't ever fall for the social utopianism. This is not Marxism now. Marxism is an entirely different thing. I'm talking about social utopianists that will promise if only what we say, if only we believe or you believe that man is good by nature. He's good. He wants the common good, if you believe that. Man, the truth is, in my experience, man is neither good or bad. He's in a continuum. If you want the good, you better be able to deserve the good. You've got to win the good. Good is not a gift bestowed by the gods, as the social utopians may argue or suggest. Dr. Freud told us, Hominus, lupus hominus, man to wolf to man. And he said further, I am not an economist, but I'm able to suggest, or I know for certain, based on psychological premises that have been long proven. The psychological premises on which socialism is predicated are untenable. Adam Smith got it right in The Wealth of a Nation. Although economically from the big picture he was wrong. This is a layman talking. I'm an idiot. But I'm expressing a fool's opinion. But in my opinion he was wrong because it's much more complicated than that. Things are too intermixed to come up with one economic solution. You need political scientists, well-schooled. You need economists, well-schooled. You need an accountant, well-schooled, that has no dog in the hunt. You need good fact-checkers that can hold these power people, hold their feet to the ground, and immediately be able to say to them, come up with the right facts, right there. We have the tech to do it, in my opinion. You're lying. You are a liar. And call them and expose them right there, right when it happens, and bring them to account. So we, the public, have a chance to hear the pure facts without adornment, adornment, embellishment, and sales pitch. We have that right. I claim it. All the only thing we have a right to, in my opinion, is the pure hard facts that are, that are incontestable, that stand out in bold relief, in neon lights, and then each of us makes a decision predicated on that. We can choose not to hear the facts. 
we can be deaf, diamond, dumb, and blind to the facts. But we're going to know. We're the ones who closed our eyes. We're the ones who closed our ears. We're the ones who shut our mouth when we heard a complete, convincing, undeniable, indubitable demonstration of the facts, the arguments, and the evidence. We choose not to believe it. That's our problem. We have to live with that. Give me the cold, hard facts. No matter how they turn up, I'll make the decision. I'll make the right decision. But you give me bullshit, and I'll make a bullshit decision. That's all. Then it becomes a game of winning is all. Then it becomes a game of distraction. Then it becomes a game of hyperbole, exaggeration. Then it becomes a, another game of wagging the dog. And I've got to tell you right now, I'm steeped in a pool of bullshit. I got so much bullshit around me, I gotta dig my way out of. But it takes a certain amount of grit to say bullshit to bullshit. It takes a certain amount of grit not to throw perfume over it, but to stand up to the stench of the bullshit and deal with it in its full, odorous, horrific stench and deal with that. I gotta deal with the hand I've been dealt. It comes down to this. You and I must learn in the way it's set up for us to learn, which is not ideal. You gotta fight for an education. Education is everything, but that word means nothing. You got to get in there and fight for it, right where you are. I never knew this before. Right where you are. Don't compare yourself. Don't say, hey, the other guy's got more than bullshit. Fight for it right where you are. In bodybuilding, don't do what I did when I drove iron. I was stupid. I followed bad advice. I followed advice from people who claimed to know what they were doing. And because I was ignorant and because I want, listen to this carefully, I wanted to cut corners. I wanted to crash a great physique. I identified with the heroes in the wider magazine. I bought Charles Atlas when he told me in just three months, three months I'm calling out to my he-men, my army of he-men, do you want to stop being a weakling? Do you want to stop being puky, puny? Do you want to get the attention and hold the attention of physically desirable women? Sexually exciting. You know what I'm talking about. Put yourself in my hands and I'll tiger dinsel your back, your lats. I'll coconut your delts. I'll put TNT into your fists. I'll marble column your abs. I'll turn your legs into huge towers of power. I'll turn your forearms into mighty tree trunks. I'll turn your grip into steel. I'll take those those puky, puny, soft triceps of yours and turn them into iron horseshoes. I'll turn you into a fighting machine just on a stand. No longer will anyone bully or intimidate you. No longer will the bullies take your girlfriend. And we did a bit called uh, Frankie's Pie in the Face to deal with that. I was Frankie, a comedy act. And my partner, I'm five, three and a half, short and dumpy. And my partner was GQ, 6'2", full head of hair. I comes up on the stage and I talks to the house and I complain that I'm losing my girlfriend, Emma Airhead, whom I've, whom I've invested so much in money, time, emotion, and become addicted to the presence. I was a flaming codependent. And then along came Big Brian, 6'2", 
full head of hair, hair, GQ. And he's taking my girlfriend Emma away from me just on appearance. And I'm crying to the house. It isn't fair. It isn't fair. And I'm begging the house to intervene on my behalf. That's the first big mistake a victim makes. He's looking for bystander. He's looking for the guards to come in on his side. And I'm pleading the house. Then comes Emma Airhead up to the stage and she's complaining. She's telling the house what a schmuck Frankie is. He's short. He's dumpy. He's ugly. He's no good in bed. He's pukey. He's puny. He's terrible. Then up walks Big Brian. GQ, 6'2", full head of hair, muscular. And he's just strutting up and just on a stand. Frankie wilts. He looks so weak and beauty and pukey, so humbled. This is the pariah. This is the social pariah. This is the man in pillory right there on a the stage. This is a man who's put in a cage. Listen to me carefully. They put him in a cage. They put that Frankie into a cage. And the plot is until the monkey comes. Frankie is undressed naked. Frankie's hands are tied. He's in a cage like a monkey, like an animal. And the house is filled with a swing party, okay? Like a huge hefter. You have the huge man. Mansion, the party. And everybody's swinging, all kinds of sexually desirable women. They're dressed in tight minis, tight jeans, whatever, everything. The full swing, fun, creative, sexual, free environment that the sexual revolution, the bullshit sexual revolution, from the point of view of the short, small man who's excluded, promised. And everybody is torturing the monkey. There's all kinds of sexual activity. The monkey sees this. He's beating on the chains. He wants to participate. And everybody's laughing and mocking the monkey. And they won't let the monkey out until the monkey comes. But the monkey's hands are tied. The monkey can't masturbate. He can't do all he can do is watch. And they're torturing and they're blaming the monkey. And they're ridiculing and mocking the monkey as all this sexual activity is going on around him. Dig what I'm talking about. And the monkey's looking for somebody to jump in, open the cage door for him, and unshackle his arms so he can participate. But even if, and the monkey always knows that tragically or co and comically, this is a tragic comedy, even if they let him out, even if they take off the shackles, He'll be shunned at the party. No woman will swing with the monkey. No woman will swing with this short, ugly little guy, this dwarf, this troll, this gnome. So either way he loses, he's much better off if he stays in a cage. Because at least if he's in a cage, he can see the action and remember the action so he can masturbate later to the memory. We're telling some truth here. That's my purpose.